from the darkest corners of Tumblr comes a podcast where we take two of your favorite fictional characters, get them together, and ask, do we ship it? Welcome to Ships of Night. This is the ASMR version of the show now. Greg, I think you're not okay with this. Am I doing it right? <laughs> Zach, am I doing it right? The ASMR? Is it good? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Ships in the Night. Uh, we won't be doing that for very long. Thank Christ. <laughs> Greg, not okay with the ASMR. Zach Wilson, my co-host, is very much on board with it. I, Greg Goodness, the other co-host of this podcast, very much not on board with it. <laughs> I hate everything about that. Get with the times, Greg. No, thank you. Um, well, while Greg adjusts to modern society, let me introduce to you our fantastic guest, Today on the show, we are welcoming a wonderful comedian, writer, producer for Shitpost at the Pack Theater. It's Jupiter Bodo. Hi. Thank you guys for having me. By the way, I appreciated your ASMR. I felt the little Pringles <laughs> on my neck like Will Byer uh, sensing creatures from the upside down. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let's see if we can figure There might be some whispered sweet nothings today on the show. We have to get into our ships to find out. So let's do our first couple, which was sent to us via email to our not confusing email, ships in the night email at gmail.com, where you can so send. Confusing. All of your great ship ideas. We got a bunch of really amazing ones this week we that did. I'm really excited to eventually bring on the show. But this first one is from a former guest on the show, actually. A uh, recent guest, David Dickerson, sent us in this one, and we had to investigate it. Eric Cartman from South Park and Lucy from Peanuts. And I immediately see how this one works. What do you guys think? What's your reaction to Cartman and Lucy? Two of the biggest assholes in all of cartoonery? Yes, I think that there's definitely a through line there. They prefer pranksters, Greg? Sure, schemers, little little rascals, uh, if you will. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down to do anything with Cartman. He is a very complex character. And Lucy, I just think, is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting that you see Cartman as complex. <laughs> Lu look, Lucy's a psychiatrist. She's here to help. She yeah. is an unlicensed psychiatrist. Uh, she doesn't need to get with your corrupt medical boards, Greg. But she's kind of like the person, like when you're getting your physical from your, uh, like in a hospital room, and then the person takes the glove off and they go, "Okay, uh, the actual doctor will be in shortly." <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Yeah, exactly. Wait, who are you again? Oh, don't worry about it. Goodbye, forever. <laughs> well, so obviously these two within their friend groups, they. They serve a similar purpose, but do they work together as a couple? I think we need to look into it and figure out how this story goes. What's the meet cute here? How do Eric Cartman and Lucy meet? So you guys mentioned the psychiatry aspect of Clearly. all this. Yeah. I can totally see an episode of South Park where Eric Cartman is like, hmm, all these people are going into psychiatrists and trying to get their minds analyzed. I got to get me in on that gravy train. Absolutely. So I think that Lucy is overdoing her little thing, five cents, psychiatry. And then what should she see when she looks to her left but Eric Cartman using migrant workers to erect like a giant $50 per session <laughs> psychiatry booth. Oh yeah, he has no idea what it, no, well he, he looks up what a standard copay is. And he's <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. $50, that's the cost. <laughs> he accepts HMO and PPOs. Lucy is like, this is a far better scheme than what I was running. <laughs> But I think, yeah, she's kind of pissed that he is moving in on her turf. Like, Eric Cartman has ad adorned a sweater vest and, like, some glasses. Maybe he has, like, a bust of Freud over in his booth somewhere. It's like, yes, please, come in. Discuss your most inner dark secrets, which I definitely won't use to blackmail you later on. Oh, that's great, yeah. <laughs> See, in my mind, it was just like, what little, like, offensive thing is it going to be? Is he going to over-diagnose autism? And, like, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> And no, but selling your secrets as like he basically combines yeah. internet scams yeah. and, who are like taking your information and selling them to a third party with psychiatry and it's a brilliant pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah, okay, I do, I do, yeah, he would do that. That is like uh, the, the, the keeper of secrets, but Lucy's the more 
complicated one with me. How would she try to match that? She's not, it was like when um, Eric Cartman met Bart Simpson and Bart Simpson's like, I'm a bad dude. I cut a head off a statue. He's like, I made a guy eat his parents. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, who are these two people to each other? Like how could Lucy compare? Like how would she ma match his energy? That is a fantastic question. I think there is definitely going to be the immediate rivalry of Eric Cartman has his $50 copay HMO PPO accepted. I mean, I think Lucy is just going to like one up him in the easiest sense possible in that she's going to take a little bit of black paint and change the cent sign to a dollar and then add just two zeros after it. So it's like psychiatry, $500. It's more expensive, so it has to be better than Eric Cartman's <laughs> dumb psychiatry office. Which, if you're moving into the town of South Park, is exactly the logic that you would get from Randy Marsh and all of the adults <laughs> in South Park. Yeah, so she, exactly, she gets all these people lining up outside of her booth, so Eric Cartman has to, like, stomp over there. Yeah. Yeah, right? Be like, you think you're fucking smarter than me, you dumb bitch? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Just, I'll come and get you. <laughs> he'll just see that his line is gone and it's over, like, across the street because they're going to be across the street from each other. Oh, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And just, he's like, what the hell is this? You know, he comes over <laughs> and he's like, and he's just trying to figure it out and they're like, well, it's, uh, you know, it's more expensive, so, you know, it's just better. Yeah. But so uh, yeah. here's how I think this turns into a romance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Schroeder is one of the only clients left going to Cartman's <laughs> clinic. The struggling artist, yes. <laughs> but he, but Cartman knows that Lucy has a thing for Schroeder. I mean, she's always sort of berating him to do better at piano, yeah. <laughs> but I think that there is a weird sort of uh, psychosexual control aspect <laughs> to that relationship. But so I think he uses the information that he has on on Schroeder to he's trying to like get Lucy to like push him into like being like, I don't like you anymore. I think that they are fighting, right? Eric has been using this like psychological warfare of Schroeder and she's just very easily one-upping him by mm. raising her mm. prices. And so they meet in the middle of the road, right? It's like, you're a bad psychiatrist and a bad doctor. You're not even a doctor. And then in the midst of all of this anger and frustration, they just start kissing. Like the awkward fourth grader, like, it, like <laughs> they don't really know how to do it, but this is their version of like furiously <laughs> hooking up. Yeah, oh, 100%. It's a classic rom-com trope, but it, it, I think it totally applies here. Yeah. yeah. I, by the way, let's describe that kiss a little bit more. I think, <laughs> uh, I think it would be like, did you ever watch that TLC thing where like these two virgins didn't kiss until they got married? Oh, God, I've seen a few of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like an open mouth chewing kiss. That's what it's like. <laughs> like eating tongue, like that's what you do, right? Like uh, kissing is, is partially touching each other's tongues. and. Well, that's how Eric would definitely explain it. Yeah, me and my girlfriend, we kiss. I like to chew on her tongue, you know, like adults <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> chew on her tongue. I mean, it's a classic South Park version of like the tampon up the butt. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they, he just, he latches on to like what he saw in some movie that is not how it all works at in the slightest. Yeah. Or yeah, a yeah. sixth grader told him, a sixth grader, a sixth greater told him that he has to bite the tongue. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. Or his idea of, like, like things like gay sex is, and you put your two wieners together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this creates a rash in South Park of kids just bleeding out from their tongues. <laughs> like, people are dying because they're making... Uh, me, well, me and my girlfriend made out so hard that she died because I bit her tongue so hard. Let's be fair. One person died, and we all know who it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tweak. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna, the bus driver, Mrs. Crabtree. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so these two basically, once they start dating, this is where I feel like the town of South Park, whichever town they're in, everyone needs to run for the hills. Oh, yeah. This is a power couple, a power scheming couple that their minds together can absolutely like bring down a local government, if not further. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I could see them like coming out with like motivational books about like uh, like 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 power, like how to like power move your way through the office or something like that. Like, I don't know. Um, what is Lucy's, what's Lucy's MO in her psychiatry? What's her, what is her key bitchiness? Lean in. Lean in. Yeah, <laughs> very much lean in. There it is, yeah, yeah. Cartman and Lucy's lean, how to lean in book. <laughs> like, 
uh, I can totally see that, that they're taking that sort of like relentless positivity from pop psychology today and just applying it to the most selfish, horrific, self-centered means possible. What's the most bullshit thing going on in psychology right now? Oh, man. Like the biggest scam in psychology. Uh, crystals? <laughs> it's not psychology, Greg. But they make it so it is, yeah. right? They're like, okay, we need to find, we need to have a physical product that we can push out to people. You have to sleep with a rock under your pillow. It'll absorb all of the negative energy that is coming to you from your dreams. Again, yeah, for sure. not psychology. <laughs> but for them it is because they're totally unlicensed. Oh, for, Car- for Cartman and for Lucy. Yeah, and they're totally yes. going to be, because they now have these two schemer minds together, it's like, listen, Cartman, we're going to pull the football out from the s- rubes of this town. We're going <laughs> to make them sleep with Formica under their pillows. Yeah. And Cartman's like, oh, my God, you, you bitch, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, the, the signpost goes up, the doctor's. Are in. Oh yeah, that's like the big step in the, That's essentially the Facebook official of okay. these two. Yeah, yeah, is when they change the sign to the doctors. So I guess the question is like, how does this relationship go? Do like, do they make it in the end? Because I got to be honest, I don't know if they do. I think one is scamming the other, and it's probably Eric. But I could see him getting his cub up and where he thinks he's scamming Lucy in the end. But it turns out Lucy has like a shit ton of skeletons in her closet. It's like evil Morty. She just pulls mm. like a Kaiser so saying, yeah, yeah, like walking crazy. away, taking yeah. all of <laughs> Eric's money. It turns out the LLC they formed was 100% in her name. 100%, yeah. Yeah, or vice versa. <laughs> they get sued to hell in high water and it's totally in Cartman's name. I like the suing going to that. Yeah, it's something that Cartman has met with intense punishment, not debt, not crippling debt, but intense social backlash. Yeah, I mean, look, I think that these two go uh, hot and heavy in terms of, like, their business partnership and scamming for a while, but it's almost like, I forget which show it is, but there's a show on, I think, HGTV where it was a married couple flipping Mm -hmm. houses. Yeah. They got divorced, but they kept the show going. (laughs) Mm. So Mm. now it's like, I think that's what it is. It's like they go out and they're doing like broadcasts and CDs and DVDs and webcasts of like, where the power couple of psychology and or crystals. Like, and then, yeah, that's great. as, As soon as the camera stops rolling, it's like, I, fucking hate you you fat ass like just brutal hatred off sure. camera <laughs> i feel like the show that they would be on would be ellen <laughs> <laughs> yeah they come out dancing <laughs> and then as soon as the cameras drop everyone on that show is like fuck you fuck yeah. you ellen fuck you cartman and we're back yeah. fun dancing ellen's also a huge bitch <laughs> <laughs> The yeah. character of Ellen, distinguishable from the real life Ellen that you may have seen on your television sets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ellen, please come on our show. I we like, love you. I like Ellen just taking off a mask. <laughs> 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 this is horrible like oh god which again fits in the world of south park so yeah these two are these two are together for a while but yeah they do not they eventually just fucking hate each other yeah it's not a healthy relationship by any stretch of the imagination no and it shouldn't be like look these are two I couldn't believe it when I heard it because I'm like, oh my God, like Lucy is the biggest, the only other biggest asshole I know in the world of cartoons <laughs> beyond Eric Cartman. Like she's just a horrible person. That's funny because is there not one, you couldn't think of another cartoon that has a huge asshole. What about Martin? Well, not Martin. <laughs> Nelson Muntz. That's he's a jerk, but like he <laughs> has like problems at home. And like he's like... <laughs> got all this stuff going on in his life when you get into his more personal episodes sure sure lucy is straight upper middle class privilege for yeah, sure exactly she creates her own problems <laughs> there was a quote on when i was doing research for this and i looked up uh lucy lucy van pelt's uh wikipedia oh that's her name from somebody named christopher caldwell who's an editor uh for a lot of newspapers <laughs> he said at her best Lucy is the most terrifying character in the history of comics. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, that adds up. All right. Well, I think that's the story of Lucy Van Pelt and Eric Cartman. For sure. Can we focus on the fact that she's Dutch? Like, I, like, that's like, I don't know why. I was like, Van Pelt. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, you something? know those crafty Dutch. <laughs> 
<laughs> those ruthless. Let me be the first to say this is an anti-Dutch podcast. <laughs> I mean, they created the East and West Indies Corporation. <laughs> we here at Chips in the Night love the Dutch, and do not. Uh, Greg's <laughs> vo- point of view does not represent the it, uh, views of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I care. For, uh, yeah, I like the Dutch. I don't care for those Dutch ovens. Yeah. <laughs> well. While I try to air out of this room, uh, we're going to take a quick break and then come back with our second ship of the night. Stick around. And we're back. And this one got sent to us via our absolutely not confusing email address, which you can send your ship ideas to, which is Ships of the night email at gmail.com. It's so confusing. We got some amazing stuff this week. Thank you guys for sending them in. They have been added to the shipyard, our giant spreadsheet of different ship ideas. And this one is Taz, the Tasmanian devil from Looney Tunes, and the tornado from Twister. Mm. And this is an awesome one. I felt like we had to tackle it. We just spin our way into this story. Oh. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sorry. What do you guys think, Taz and the tornado? It's there. Like, look, it, Taz likes to whip himself into a tornado-like frenzy. I guess it's the logical progression that um, he would want to have sex with an actual twister. <laughs> for sure. Um, I don't think he has the ment- like mental faculties to... I, he, basically, he does have the mental faculties, uh, the lack thereof, to love an inanimate object. If you follow uh, Taz lore, like I know many of you did, he does, <laughs> he does have a family that has fu- fully functional speech, uh, and he's the only one who doesn't. Really? Yeah. He has like a, like a valley girl sister with a ponytail... And then I don't remember anything else about him. But they can understand him? I don't remember. I don't remember. I can't. I imagine they kind of understand him. But as much as one does when you live with somebody who's mentally capacitated for 18 years or however long they've been, they're just like, I, I sort of understand his speech. I mean, I, the Looney Tunes can understand him. Like, he can communicate with them. Yeah. And I think that... It, it it would be it wouldn't feel like communication to us because it wouldn't be vocal in the same sure. way. But I think there's a language of the tornadoes that these two could speak. Like there's like that like it's it's that alien species mm. where like mm. maybe they communicate in colors or like wavelengths. It's the Who language knows? of destruction. Like the twister uh, just tears a cow in half. Oh, that's great. It's like and, a rival. Yeah, the Taz is like, ooh, that's my mating call. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's how it starts. Maybe the twister has heard, has heard the tales of this, this tiny tornado that roams the land and just eats things in, in voracious appetites and it wants to find the only person who understands it. So this twister is sentient. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to, let's justify that. All those little Pepsi can things that they made at the end of it with the little things that read it gave it artificial intelligence and, and yes. it, becomes, it becomes self-aware through that. <laughs> This is the James Cameron <laughs> reboot where, like, essentially the twister becomes, like, Skynet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Through man's hubris of trying to understand, understand and something. conquer nature, we came in sentient. <laughs> <laughs> we made it so it can't be stopped. <laughs> it's able to make other little tornadoes that can just, like, destroy towns. Look, that's the great thing. You know, like, it, it starts with, like, the Terminator starts with like a skull being crushed. Well, mm. that's what we have. We have the same ground of just like skulls and just whirlwinds. <laughs> <just going through. laughs> and uh, for some reason, like your simple foot soldier or drone equivalents are just tumbleweeds that just come <laughs> massive, giant tumbleweeds like tanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, God, that's so impossibly stupid. So this is after the, the tornado has already dealt with Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton. Is this after the fall of man? They, like, sent, a, they is... sent a tornado back in time <laughs> to, <laughs> to kill Helen Hunt's uh, future uh, child, and you know they kill. They have to kill Helen Hunt. No, this is great. This is this is Space Jam Two. This <laughs> is what got rejected yeah, when yeah, I sure. went pitch yeah, Space yeah. Jam Two. Is that it's the future? The Twister tornado has gained sentience. 
and absolutely like taken over and killed all of mankind. Sure, sure. It no, discovers he, that there's a way because cartoons do not have to obey the laws of physics. Interesting. It means that it can, if it gets into Looney Tunes <laughs> land, it can use that world to travel back in time. Interesting. Right. Interesting. Interesting. In, yeah. Instead of doing like a basketball tournament, humanity is like, okay, well, we have access to these Looney Tunes. Let's send one back in time. <laughs> so that it can fight the twister that's it it has to okay so it's helen hunt and bill paxton's kid that could possibly take on <laughs> the, the tornadoes Christ. right so that's the john connor type so, parallel. so he is sent to find taz correct taz is sent Ted, to find no, yeah, the twister for, that's correct so not, so not the child but they they, they find taz like taz you're the only one for the job. It's a future Bill Paxton who's yeah, president now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You need to kill the Twister. <laughs> this is great. Um, all right, so Taz gets sent back to 1996. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, to fight the tornado. So this is right what I, I think they miscalculate, and he finds the tornado right as it gains sentience. Like, they were supposed to send it back a little bit before. Sure, But, sure. like, for the purpose of the story, he finds it as it gains sentience, as those cans lit, light up, Absolutely. whatever it is, and they just, there's this little tornado moving towards the twister. But what happens? What ha how, do they, how do they react to each other? Okay. Going a little ahead, working backwards from there, I see this as one of those things where they do truly bond, connect, and love each other, but they know it can never be. You know what I mean? Sort of like this idea of like, uh, what's a good example? Okay, I guess it's Kylo Ren and Rey. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's sort of this thing where they are, there is a connection, but they know one of them has to go. Oh, oh, it's a tragic yeah. love story. Correct. Yeah, we are we're very <laughs> attracted to each other. We have so much in common, but there's that fundamental difference where Taz is chaotic good and the Twister is chaotic evil. Correct. And they yeah. will never meet like in whole. Yeah, so, they can try to convince. There's like a little bit of light in you, mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of dark in you. <laughs> Taz gets into the eye <laughs> of the storm. Yeah, yeah. And is like, rah, 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 which means. What are you doing? Yeah. Why must you destroy what mankind has built? <laughs> Daz is very eloquent. That's what we don't know. It's just yeah, in a yeah. different language. So. Sure, sure. Yeah, I can totally see that. Like, listen, we talk about what constitutes like a relationship on this show. Sure. I think, is this the sort of thing where they know it can never last? This is literally a meat... <coughs> and have furious, furious sexual intercourse, like, as basically, like, I am going to destroy you by having sex with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This okay. is an entire relationship confined to the 15 minutes that it mm. takes for them to uh, uh, co-opulate? Is that... I, I <laughs> co co yeah, yeah, co -opulate. <laughs> I disagree that it's violent, though. I think it is. It seems violent from the outside because yeah. there's so much destruction around them. Correct. But to these two, this is soft and beautiful yeah. lovemaking. It's a it's a ballet. It's a Pina Bausch modern dance, <laughs> sort of this this eloquent black swan sort of back and forth in the winds. You know, mm. I could see that happening. Yeah, it's. It's what what is uh what's playing in the background? It's um Ave Maria. <laughs> I was gonna say time to say what's goodbye. The, <laughs> what's I the song that. from Ghost? Oh oh uh I don't know actually. <laughs> it's the song from Ghost. That's it's what like, we need to know. Um, uh, but like I, it's it's just play, it, pictured in your head. Those of you who can remember what that song is titled, as the as the the two twisters intertwine the mm, little one, mm. the little Taz one at just the base of the tornado as they <laughs> meld together. Oh what? yeah. The wind currents stroking one another, just centrally. Sure, you are the wind beneath my wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what, <laughs> again, Taz also has a beautiful singing voice. Yeah, we I just do, don't know. I do like the idea of it's the wind beneath my wings, but it's Taz singing it. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're. 
uh, wind. <laughs> he can get that one word down. Um, yeah, I think it, it's just this, like, it's a ballet, like you were saying. Yeah, as yeah. He, and, like, eventually he gets lifted up into the tornado sure. yeah, and yeah. is spinning in circles around it like a funnel. Yeah, yeah. And then the tornado at the end of it just gently puts him down on the ground and moves off into the distance to try to destroy another barn. <laughs> but this is where Taz has to stop the twister, right? Because that's what his mission is. Does he have to murder the yes. tornado? Yes. Yeah, right after happen. they just made love. I Here's, I think it is sort of murder. Sort of. But. Taz makes love to the Twister Tornado so beautifully and so powerfully <laughs> that the AI within yes. this tornado is like, now that you have taught me what love is, <laughs> I no longer seek to destroy humanity. That's great. <laughs> you in this world and dimension shall live, Taz the Tasmanian Devil. Goodbye, Taz. You are forever my gentle lover. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, he's float, he just gently floats down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, look, it's Taz knew what he was doing when he went into this. It's like, I'm going to fuck this tornado so good <laughs> <laughs> that it's going to dissipate and forever forgive mankind. But mm. it's, it is like a very sweet thing. It's like, oh, this is the most, I, I understand the error of my ways now, Tasmanian devil. You have shown me. Thank you for your love. Uh, you know what else I was thinking? is if we could describe this ballet a little bit more, like the force of two tornadoes hitting is almost like entering a uh, 2001 space-like void. Where you're just like, <laughs> like all those flashing colors and they live a thousand lifetimes, <laughs> understanding each one of their own perspective. That's how, they, that's how they, they come to see each other. They have like a thousand lifetimes with each other in the middle of all of this. <laughs> and that's when he teaches him love, the, the tornado love. Yeah. Like that. yeah. <laughs> but, but Taz is never the same again. He has, like, godlike intelligence, like Bran the Broken after getting everything. <laughs> <laughs> the tornado goes through that, like, multicolored hyper loop and then just yeah. sees a giant baby Taz floating <laughs> yeah. over planet Earth. That's it's great, 2001 yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's three or four different movies. Yeah, yeah. It's what Hollywood is sorely lacking. It starts as a crazy disaster movie and then heads into a, a interstellar 2001 as cerebral mind F of a trip where we come to understand the nature of humanity. Yeah, I mean, also fucked Zarathustra. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought you were going to say, it's what Hollywood is seriously lacking, remakes. <laughs> remakes <laughs> of a lot of different movies. <laughs> this is beautiful. Yeah. I wasn't expecting this, but it really does become, we've made high art cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this one had potential for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is like directed by, uh, Christopher Nolan. Oh, oh Christopher sure. Nolan. Oh, who did, um, Milk? Oh, Gus Van Sant. Oh, Gus Van Sant does this one justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Gus Van Sant's <laughs> what foray is, into disaster movies and the Looney Tunes IP. Sure. What is the title oh. of this Gus Van Sant movie? Gus Van Sant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, directed by Gus Van Sant. Uh, Whirlwind of Love. Um, blown, blown away. I do like blown away. That was if it would be written by who's the explosion guy? Michael Bay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the blown thing away. is it's all in the pronunciation. If it's blown away, <laughs> then it's Michael Bay. But if no. it's blown, blown away, <laughs> like you need to have it in like very delicate cursive letters, mm. Mm. then it's a Gus Van Sant flick. Spun around my heart. Oh, spun is good. Oh, spun. Yes. Oh, spun is good. A, a Spike Lee joint. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the book by <laughs> who did push? What was that? Uh, Sapphire. Yeah, based on the book by Sapphire. <laughs> we have spun. now involved every major Hollywood player in this. Spun based on the book by Lola Bunny. <laughs> the only way to make a movie like this is to get a whirlwind of directors. Oh, you just throw that in. That was, so yeah, boo it. Please, please boo that. All right. Well, with that as a final note. I think we can close this close the book on this one. We're going to come back with our matchmaker segment. So stick around for that. We'll be right back.
and we're back. And before we dive into the matchmaker segment, I do want to just once again remind you guys, we say it every week, but it is such a huge help and just a good ego boost for me and Greg. Which we desperately need. <laughs> when you go onto either iTunes or Podbean or Stitcher, wherever you're listening to this, and leave us a rating, leave us a review. It, it helps other people find the show. It helps our numbers. It helps just more people hear this. And we just do this. This is for fun. So it's not even like keeping the lights on or anything like that. It just makes us feel good and helps other people find this absurdity. So if you like two tornadoes fucking in the wind, which is the alternate title for, <laughs> for that story we just did, uh, leave us a review. Let us know what you think. What? Let us know what ships you want us to dive into next, and it, we will add them to the shipyard. It's the alternate title for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds uh, like an episode of Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> All right, so next up on our schedule is Matchmaker, because Jupiter has brought us a single from fiction that our dating service needs to find love for. So Jupiter, please, who have you brought to our doorstep today? Well, gentlemen, uh, I'm going to speak on behalf of a lovely friend of mine. Her name is uh, Piranha Plant from uh, the Smash Brothers game. Uh, a lot of people are unaware, but she is a girl. Oh, so keep that in mind. Okay. Add that to the roster, right? <laughs> very diversifying that very male li lineup. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she is from the Super Mario Brother game. Uh, color red means that she comes from the ground, not like her. Uh, this that's the variety we're dealing with, not the not the green and yellow ones from that come in other pipes. There are differences. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, she is, uh, let's say, let's see, she's been around since probably 1985, so she's about 34 years old. She, about uh, time to uh, settle down. Yeah, um, yeah. She does enjoy, uh, eating ass. <laughs> <laughs> by definition, you're, you're correct, by definition, that's what she does. That's it, that's, uh, that's, it. in the Smash Brothers lineup, uh, that's, do you guys are familiar with Piranha oh. Plant? Have you seen her work? Her, oh, yeah. yes, oh, yes. Buddy, I get that side B move. <laughs> I understand the Piranha Plant. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think we have a couple of good ones. Yeah, for I you. think we, we we have some people that we think would be great. Greg, I think I I think I'd like to go first on this one. I have a, a great option here. Plant that seed, buddy. God damn it. <laughs> so here's the thing for Piranha Plant. I think she needs somebody who understands what it's like to be a plant, to just be connected to the earth in that way and sure she can move around but that's the thing this guy can also move around i'm talking of course about groot groot from the marvel franchise a walking tree for a walking plant these two are going to connect in a beautiful beautiful way groot doesn't need language he only needs three words but everyone understands the, me the messages of love coming from him as these two intertwine their vines, they're gonna make love. Also, Groot, a big fighter, will we'll meet toe to toe, maybe alongside for a co op battle, a team battle, if you will, with the Piranha Plant. These two are gonna fight their way across the galaxy, making love and war. It's an interesting take. I'll give it to you. The plant connection is strong. Uh, Groot can get it any day of the week. But Zach, I think I got you one better. Hit me up, bud. Three words, Zach? That's two words too many. The only <laughs> word that you need is Victory Bell. Victory Bell, the Pokemon. A natural fighter, a plant, and someone who is gonna understand that, look, different situations call for different types of moves. This is a, this is a creature that knows strategy, that understands that sort of heated battle situation that Piranha Plant is constantly in. And look, we don't know for a fact that Pokemon never eat people. Like, I think that there is a world in which a lot of like the missing hikers in the woods in Pallet Town, that's all Victory Bell, baby. They consume them. So I think that you can absolutely get into a situation where Mario is about to go down a pipe, Piranha Plant pops out, and where does Mario jump? Straight into the mouth of the Victory Bell. 
<laughs> All right, so so those are our our two options. We got Groot and Victory Bell. Mm. Jupiter, do mm. you have any questions for us uh, before we get into our rebuttal round? Seeing as uh, there's some strong points in that Victory Bell and Piranha Plant are both Japanese, and we know how the Japanese are about keeping their uh, whoa, country pure. Whoa. <laughs> hey, hey. Ooh, okay. <laughs> what is Groot? What does Groot have to offer uh, <laughs> for uh, uh, like a like a cultural relation sort of thing? How do they mine the gap? See, they, these guys already have a cultural connection. Victory Bell, Piranha Plant. How does Groot break into that? Uh, cultural barrier. Interesting. And is there anything that I'm going to need to address for this sweet, sweet Pokemon love <laughs> Oh, battle? okay. Do I ask both at the you same can, time? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, first of all, you're right. Uh, Victory Bell uh, does eat him some Jesse Boy when he comes out the Pokeball. <laughs> uh, he loves the taste of Team Rocket, for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, but that being the case, uh, perhaps... Um, you know, sometimes, like, you know, for actors, they understand their schedules and stuff like that, but and that's why they end up dating together. But oftentimes, it's the, it's the point of conflict. Like, they, they both are fighting uh, types of, uh, of plants. Um, mm. How are they able to separate uh, work and home lives? Or, or in fact, or maybe perhaps because they're both in the same uh, field, if one is more successful than the other one, it doesn't... Um, doesn't create spite or animosity that one is doing better. I get you. Okay. Yes. I think we can both handle this. Zach, are you ready yeah. to dive yeah. in? Yeah, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So the thing with Groot, and he, he's, I think just as a character, he is very zen to the, to the world, to nature, especially once Groot grows into his fully formed self. He connects to everything around him. Mm-hmm. Those, those the lights that he puts out in the first mm-hmm. Guardians movie, that is a beautiful, it's very reminiscent of a lot of Japanese ceremonies. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to fit into that society beautifully. And Piranha Plant loves to travel now. What better way to travel than with this tree that can go anywhere in the galaxy aboard the ship oh, they can yeah mm. that's my time <laughs> okay travel <laughs> all like right it. i think i got you on this one hit me up zach what is a mario pipe but a giant pokeball we have seen that a pokemon is uh, absorbed into like its little home where it can chill and relax like we're led to believe that this is like a comfy place for them to be i think that that piranha plant goes down into a pipe and that's like a little pokeball it's a shared universe so when they're not fighting they can be chilling and like watching netflix together they can have that connection where it's like oh how was your day let me rub your shoulders so that you feel a little bit better you're more battle ready okay okay Gentlemen, that was great. I do feel the need to nerd check you that warp pipes are not shrinking things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they could too. be. They just transport you to another place that is of normal size unless you're going to giant, giant world. world. <laughs> Correct. And no. wait, let me just go ahead and support that. We got glass pipes with uh, 3D land and 3D <laughs> world. And so you know exactly what's going on there. No shrinking, all suction. <laughs> <laughs> so Jupiter, we've got Groot and Victory Bell. We want to send your your, right. your friend Pol- Piranha Plant on a date with the best option for them. So who do you want to set up the date with? I know that Piranha Plant likes the Aladdin appeal of uh, Groot. I can show you the world <laughs> sort of a thing. The travel on the magic carpet, if you will. The Aladdin appeal is a great term. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's something that... Uh, that piranha plants, when they're in their younger, more vulnerable years, perhaps likes this bad boy image of just being taken away from home and seeing all of that. But she is a plant, and she likes to to keep her uh, feet in terra firma, you know? <laughs> so I do believe, ultimately, it would probably end up being Victory Bell. There's less of a, yeah. a cultural gap there. They exist in the same uh, universe. Uh, you know, they come from the same lineage of family from the Nintendo tree, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yep. Even though HAL Laboratories was not originally a part of that. You know, was, <laughs> uh, but I think that I think that, ultimately, it's the comfort. This is what... She goes off and has her fun time with group, but she settles in with the safety of victory. Bell. <laughs> I love that Groot is the bad boy in this universe, like the unstable lover. Uh, and Victory Bell, for whatever reason, is like the person with a pension and a nine to five. I only have one thing to say to this. I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jupiter, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Uh, if people want to find you or see your stuff, please plug away. 
Uh, absolutely. I am the producer and one of the uh, head writers for a show called Shit Post. I'm getting too close to the mic, as we talked about not doing earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the first Saturdays at the Pack Theater at midnight. We are a midnight show. It's crazy. It's about internet and internet culture. Uh, Greg, you can talk to it. You want to uh, plug it as a fan? It's so good. I go there uh, every month, and it's just a totally buck wild show. Uh, like, it really defies words. Uh, every time that you go there, it's something new and crazy and awesome segments insane videos these guys have been to so many different comic cons <laughs> and like anime cons and stuff and they always bring back insane footage and they just put on an awesome show yeah and i'm a genuine fan <laughs> oh thank show, you so. thank you yeah it's uh it's a mix of uh sketch stand up uh, a lot of videos, a lot of music. Um, I have a rap duo that we do parody internet songs under the guise of Shit Post Malone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we do all sorts of fun things. We, you know, the internet loves being mean and the internet loves cats and dogs. So sometimes we'll roast people's pets. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we hand out prizes. It's a good time, man. I, I really uh, highly encourage people to come to that. And you can follow us on social media. Uh, my personal is at Jupiter Like the Planet. All of those <laughs> words. It's not Jupiter. Uh, you know, kind of like the planet. It's Jupiter like the planet. It's also confusing. <laughs> like your guy's email, you get it. Mm -hmm. You have to make things nebulous or, you know, uh, you know, you want people to to have to look for you. And then uh, shitpost is at underscore underscore shitpost. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> Speaking of being nebulous, by the way, we are impossible to search for on the internet. You type in shitpost and you're not going to find our show. Mm -hmm. But you can find us on Facebook at uh, shitpost comedy. Um, or type yeah. in shit post pack theater. Yeah, pack that theater. should help you help it. Oh yes, help you yeah. Find oh, it. you're right. That should do it. Yes, shit post at pack theater. <laughs> our location <laughs> where we have our monthly show. Yeah, uh, that's it. That's what I'm plugging right now. Right on. Great. You guys can find me on the tweets at Greg Goodness, and you can also find me occasionally performing at the pack theater in beautiful sunny Hollywood, California. I'm Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. If you're a Marvel fan and not just if, uh, shipping Mario characters with Marvel characters, but in the movies themselves, check out my other podcast, Marvel Movie News, which is every Thursday at one o'clock on YouTube and then posted to audio wise all over the place. So guys, until next time, this has been Ships in the Night. <laughs>